Hi everyone, it's Guts from Pine My Life Up, and in this tutorial I will be going through how to set up your very own Raspberry Pi music player. Now this setup is pretty easy, so you shouldn't run into any problems at all. In this project I'm going to be using a pre-built software package called the Pi Music Box. This contains plenty of features that makes it a great music player. Now this is a headless music player, so you will need to use a different device to be able to control it. The good thing is you can pretty much use any device that has a browser to be able to interact with it. Now this project is completely based on audio, so it might be worth getting a USB audio card or a Raspberry Pi sound card. However, you can just simply use the HDMI out or the audio out currently on the Raspberry Pi. First we need to download the Pi music box, so head over to PiMyLifeUp.com and find the music player tutorial. Click on this link here and it will take you to PiMusicBox.com. Scroll down and download the latest version. At the time of this video it is 0.6.0. Next you are going to need a formatting tool. To get one, head back to Pi My Life Up and click on the SD Associations website link and download the SD Formatter 4.0 for either Windows or Mac. Once downloaded, follow the instructions and install the tool. Now insert the SD card into a computer or laptop's SD card reader and check the drive letter allocated to it, for example, G. Open up the SD formatter, select the drive letter for your SD card, make sure you double check this as you don't want to wipe any other device connected to your computer. Once you have confirmed the drive letter is correct, press format. Now we need to install the Win32 Disk Imager, so head back to PyMyLifeUp.com, click on the link to the Win32 Disk Imager and simply download and install this. Once installed, find and unzip the Pi Music Box file we downloaded earlier. Now open up the Win32 Disk Imager and in here select the Pi Music Box file and also the drive letter your SD card is assigned to, for example G. Confirm you have the correct details and then click on Write. Once that's finished writing we'll need to make a change if you wish to use a Wi-Fi dongle. If you're using Ethernet then you can simply remove the SD card now. So if you're using the Wi-Fi dongle we need to make a quick edit to the settings.ini file. This can be found on the SD card we just wrote to. Simply go to the SD card, open up the config folder and then open up the settings.ini file. In here add the Wi-Fi network and the Wi-Fi password next to the correct lines and then save and exit. Once you are done simply eject and remove the SD card from the computer. Now we're all good to connect everything up and turn the Raspberry Pi on. Now we will be opening up a music box in a browser so it is very important that you have an ethernet cord or a Wi-Fi dongle connected. Remember the Wi-Fi dongle required an extra bit of setting up I mentioned earlier. To connect the Raspberry Pi music server open up the browser and enter the following URL http colon forward slash forward slash music box dot local. Now if this doesn't work or you use an Android device then you'll need to use the IP of your Raspberry Pi. In my example it didn't work so I need to use my IP of 192.168.1.108. If you have your Pi connected to a screen you can see the IP on there. Once connected in your browser you should be presented with a screen like this. Now I'm just going to mention some of the things you can set up so first go to settings. In here you can see that there are quite a few settings you can edit. In network you can do stuff like change the Wi-Fi network name. This is the SSID or the name of the Wi-Fi network you wish to connect to. Next is the Wi-Fi password. This is the password required to access the Wi-Fi network. Next we have workgroup. This is the workgroup name of the local Windows network. Lastly we have SSH, only turn this on if you need to edit the Pi via the command line. Check out the SSH tutorial if you need more information on using SSH correctly. 
In here you'll find the general settings for the music box. You probably won't need to change any of these, but I do highly suggest updating the root password to the device. First we have the device name, this is the name of the Pi, and how it would be called on the local network. Change this if you wish it to be called something different to music box. Keep in mind changing it will change the URL in the browser to the new name. Next we have is a autoplay URL. You can enter a URL here to start a radio station or stream for when the device boots up. If it doesn't automatically start, you may need to increase the wait time to be a bit longer. Now wait time is the time it waits before playing the autoplay URL after boot. The time is in seconds. Next we have is the root password. By default, root password to the device is music box. This should be changed to something more secure, especially if you're going to enable SSH. Next is AirPlay Streaming. This allows you to stream directly from an iOS device to a Raspberry Pi music server. When enabled, this should show up in your AirPlay device list. Finally, DLNA, UPNP, Open Home Streaming. If you need to stream over any of these protocols, then simply enable this. In audio, you would find some basic audio settings that you might want to update. First, we have initial volume. This is the volume that the device will start at by default. Next is audio output. Here you can manually select the output for the audio. Next is the down sample USB option. Enable this if you're having trouble with the quality of the audio. This will only occur with some USB sound cards. Lastly, we have the hardware mixer. Enable this if you have a USB audio card that allows hardware mixing of the volume. Music Files allows you to update where the system can find and if it should automatically scan for music. First we have Scan Music Files. Enable this if you would like to scan for music files on boot. However, you could find that this can slow your boot time considerably. Next is the Network Drive. If you have a Network Drive set up that has all your music on it, then you can set it in here. Make sure you enter the correct username and password to accessing that drive. Finally, we have an option to resize the file system. This setting is very important if you're looking to make the most of your SD card. By default, you only have access to a fraction of the SD card. Once you enable this and reboot, you will gain access to the entire SD card. Keep in mind this setting is in beta, so you do risk losing data by enabling this setting. You will only need to run this once to gain access to the entire SD card. Now we have services. As you can see, there are plenty of services such as Spotify, YouTube, Google Music, SoundCloud, and much more. The setup for each of the services is pretty straightforward and is often explained if any extra information is required. More services may be added in the future. That's basically all the information you need to know for setting up a music player correctly. Finally, if you want access to the Mopify GUI instead of a Pi Music Box GUI, then you can simply enter the following into your browser. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash musicbox.local forward slash Mopify. Again, replace musicbox.local with your IP if the host name is not working. Keep in mind that Mopify is built for Spotify, so if you want to use other services, then you'll need to stick to the music box GUI. I hope you now have a fully working Raspberry Pi music player up and running. If you do come across any troubles, have feedback, I have missed something or anything else, then be sure to drop a comment below or over at pymylifeup.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for more Pi projects to do? Check out these 21 awesome Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.